Okay, uh, thank you for being here and for the opportunity to present some fragments from a research project that I finished two years ago. It's basically my doctoral study and later, yeah, as often happens, I work on a different topic. <laughs> Uh, so basically, I'll start shortly with my motivation to work on this topic, um, the central research statement, briefly go through the conceptual framework, and then focus on the case study, the, this participatory project remapping Europe, Remix project. Um, so I started working somehow on uh, European art project. Um, First of all, uh, of course, for how to say biographical reasons, being born behind uh, the wall, coming from the new Europe, so I was very much interested in the construction of European identity and how media plays a role in uh, artistic discourses. And I have also observed that uh, mainstream media has constructed uh, European social imaginary that maintains stereotypes, negative prejudices, and discursive hysteria towards cultural others which is of course expressed in some recent uh, social phenomenon as the Brexit and the expected wave of Eurosceptic um, skepticism, the loss of empathy towards refugees and newcomers, um, and multiple other uh, processes of exclusion that deviate Europe um, inside. And at the same time, uh, we could see that artists and creative thinkers and media makers first of all, have been trying to warn us for quite some time about Europe's contemporary condition, but at the same time have offered uh, artistic expressions and aesthetic experiences that somehow reimagine Europe as a possible space of transcultural existence. And we can observe a certain trend towards the representation of crossing boundaries, cross-cultural encounters, that we often try to define this uh, European topic, but that's not really intrinsic for the artists themselves. So in this sense, what I mean is the European project is not so much the European funding behind it, that certainly plays a role, but it's a different uh, research question, but rather the constitution of a shared semantic space and the expression of uh, artistic work that is symptomatic of uh, social cultural processes in Europe. Or as Thomas Elsiasser has put it uh, somewhere in the European cinema face to face to Hollywood, what is meant as European is still to be found, still to be discovered. And here are some of the um, uh, initiatives that I have discussed, but mostly I have paid attention to the United States of Europe, which was a traveling exhibition, the remapping Europe that I'm going to discuss a bit uh, later, and the machine to be another which does not uh, claim any European connection, but it rather uh, talks about, about the generation of empathy through embodied experiences, uh, which um, could have fitted uh, the topic on virtual reality in the next uh, session. So my broad research objective uh, was to explore if artistic discourses and creative expression could generate a transcultural European imaginary that destabilizes uh, processes of negative othering and generates cross-cultural understanding between self and cultural others. Mm -hmm. Then also I wanted to articulate the specific creative strategies that uh, artists employ. And uh, in this sense, what's rather the topic of today, its reflections, is the connection between intermediate sampling and if it can be understood as an aesthetic strategy for the representation of cross-cultural in-betweens. And I started thinking on this connection uh, when discussing uh, uh, Fatih Hakan's film, uh, The Edge of Heaven, and I, I've uh, included the name of the article uh, published in 2012 simply because it somehow resonates with, uh, or resonates with the title of the conference, so when I saw that there was an opportunity to remap in between this, also not from a cultural studies perspective, but from a media studies perspective, I thought, yeah, I, I certainly um, uh, have to um, send an abstract. And so basically in this article, mapping in between us on the representation of transculturality in the edge of heaven, I quote Fatih Hakim who says, I'm a cinema DJ, I can mix Fassbinder with Fellini, and cinema reminds of sampling. And uh, in this sense, uh, I thought, yeah, it's very interesting how he's using intermediate and intertextual sampling to talk about cross-cultural in-betweens. And this later developed into a, a broader research project on transcultural aesthetics. And these are the main, uh, probably, theoretical uh, aspects. I see the text, it's a bit uh, moving. So from the one hand, I have used um, 
Wolfgang Wallenstein's theory on uh, transculturality as the puzzling form of cultures today. He is one of the central proponents of uh, the transcultural paradigm. And just to make a remark why I prefer to talk about transculturality or not multiculturalism, that I don't really mean the coexistence of different cultures, but rather the transformation uh, of cultures. Uh, then also I have um, applied theories from uh, the Russian culturologist Mikhail Epstein, who understands transculturality as the freedom of identity shaping, or the freedom to be different not only from others, but also from your own self, and to perform different cultures. And also Epstein and Helen Berry have written on transcultural imaginary and the transformative potential of transculture that it's most clearly expressed in creative productions. And in trying to articulate the um, specific uh, creative strategies or creative techniques, if you want, that artists have used, I also turned from a more semiotic perspective, employing Julian Lotman's understanding and studies on creativity. And according to Lotman, the communicative text is monostructural in terms of coding, while the creative text is heterostructural, multistructural in um, terms of coding. So then creativity can be understood as a process of transcoding semantic structures. And on this basis, I build a conceptual model on transcultural aesthetics that I uh, claim and further studied uh, in order to uh, explore if the, my hypothesis and claim was uh, relevant. It's defined by four complementary um, modalities. The first one is the representation of transcultural tropes and transcultural identities as a discursive strategy. Uh, sampling of cultural repertoires and intermediate intertextual order as a, a generation of um, symbolic resistance and a third space between cultures, encoding in decoding encoding model of a critical media participation, which is a retort model of Stuart Hall's encoding decoding, which was developed in the 1980s in relation to the televisual network, which is uh, one channel of communication. And very optimistically, uh, I suggested that if we live in a in media environment of participatory culture, then the audience is also actively participate in a process of encoding at the receiving end, which uh, of course can be contested, and, but very much explains the notion of sampling. And then the final element was embodied transculturation that explores the sensory and effective uh, elements of uh, creative productions. Okay, I'm, I'm not going to, to discuss today. So very schematically, very briefly, I will go to the first two modalities and then move to the uh, case study. So this notion of representation of transcultural identities, why does it have a constitutive and constructive potential? Starting from Stuart Hall's studies on representation and signifying practices, where he claims that identity or cultural identity is always constituted within, not outside representation. And at the same time, his model of uh, identity construction as being or becoming, the diasporic uh, model also relates to Homi Baba's post-colonial uh, perspective on third identities or in-between in identities where the in-between is not one or the other, but the new entity that emerges in between. So then we could claim that, that the discursive reproduction of transculturality could generate process of transculturation. And as I mentioned, I studied this in uh, Fatih Haken's film, The Age of Heaven. Then moving to sampling of cultural repertoires and intertextual, intermedial, and cross-cultural order as expression of symbolic resistance, um, I have related to Dick Hebger's studies of the uh, meaning of style that is, in a sense, continuation of Stuart Hall's study of uh, signification and practices, and uh, also drawing upon uh, the early avant-garde movement as collage uh, practiced by surrealists and Dadaists. Uh, Hebger discusses the subversive potential of mixing media content in generating new meanings. And as he has also written uh, in uh, Cat and Mix and uh, Afro-Caribbean culture, the, the wild style of graffiti, uh, already in the 70s, 80s, is expressing clearly this. And here I've included some example from Banksy, who is uh, quite topical uh, these days. And uh, for instance, uh, um, his graffiti, the son of a migrant from Syria, uh, recontextualizes uh, Steve Jobs, the late Steve Jobs, as a the founder of Apple was a son of a migrant from Syria in order to, to deconstruct and contest the dominant perception that immigrants are necessarily downgrading for the host country's economy. So from this uh, quite uh, um, yeah, schematic uh, theoretical basis, I will move uh, to the 
case study, the participatory project uh, Remapping Europe, which was initiated by Docnext uh, Network and coordinated by the European Cultural Foundation in Amsterdam. So basically, in simple terms, this project, which is a transnational project, allowed young media makers, around, I think, yeah, 50 people, uh, with cross-cultural background to use film, media, news archives, often personal archives, in order to create counter-narratives uh, on migration in Europe. And also the second stage, or uh, simultaneously, uh, involved art collective European souvenirs who performed live cinema performances. Now discuss the performance Eurovisions. Uh, once again, um, I'm not going to discuss the, the 48 uh, videos that you can, I think, still watch online, uh, but rather to summarize the, the, the analysis uh, in terms of thematic orientation. And of course, depending on the four countries, I, I forgot to mention that the media labs were organized in the UK, in Poland, uh, in Turkey, and uh, in Spain. So, uh, yeah, logically, depending on the different migration history and uh, dominant media discourse in each country, uh, the discussed topics were different. For instance, in Spain, as a, a central motive emerged the stigmatization of foreigners, and uh, one of the uh, media makers created a mock documentary, a mockumentary of people who retell the experience of crossing the borders. Um, presented through the footage, found footage of animals, which of course uh, relates to the long history of discursive racism, of presenting foreigners as uh, animals. Uh, some made um, uh, some kind of parody videos of advertising or uh, mock advertisements of the third world where um, uh, being poor it's almost advertised as a commodity. In the Polish case, uh, what was interesting that people discussed immigration rather as a, um, as a choice is, is, is a need and um, the most somehow typical motive was the policing of personal relationships and um, uh, mechanisms of uh, border crossing. There was another uh, video which is a parody of a YouTube tutorial uh, but rather is teaching us how to contraband alcohol and cigarettes through the Ukrainian-Polish border. Um, in the Istanbul case um, this came in the aftermath of the Gizi protests and uh, um, one of the topics was uh, urban regeneration and gentrification and how it uh, automatically renders uh, immigrants as invisible others or minor communities. Um, I think also forced migration, especially in the process of naturalization between uh, Bulgaria and um, uh, Turkey in the ages. I I'm originally from Bulgaria, so uh, if you have questions maybe I can... Uh, later talk about this, about this very ugly process of uh, shaping someone's identity. In the UK case, uh, not surprisingly, the main topics were uh, the loss of empathy, refuge, asylum, and uh, we also see that similarly in the Turkish case, the urban space, the immigrant stroller also played a role. And from a more formal perspective, uh, since these are videos that were, uh, I mean, on the upper role created in the UK media labs uh, with um, the involvement of the BFI's future film program. So in the creative labs, usually young media makers initially had workshops and training in order to be um, educated on how to use media. And so we can see some certain thematic or even formal resemblances uh, between the video story and uh, Robert Vass' uh, documentary film Refuge England that so in sense, it's the one is recycling the other. Then um, uh, the other video, I would say, is somehow employing uh, text as a graphic element in the very same way that Keith Piper has worked with text and labels in order to deconstruct social labels on black presence in the UK. Uh, in Spain studios, and actually Semos Noventa Yocho is an artistic collective from Spain, from Sevilla, who have a long tradition of using a remix in order to express their uh, political positions and to, uh, to con contest um, um, dominant media discourses. So they were supervising the work um, in Spain and the first performance that the European souvenirs uh, created. Um, as a general observation uh, and conclusion on the remixes, I could say that somehow um, the creative practice of 
early artistic collectives as a black audio film collective. And I should also mention uh, Sankofa Film and Audio Collective um, in the UK who are using different media textures in order to represent multi-voicedness and also to generate uh, uh, different social realities is re-emerging as a relevant creative device to, um, to, to resist uh, discursive racism across Europe in creative terms. Uh, the live cinema performance, um, so we see uh, the, the group of artists who initially collaborated, I think, in 2012 on one performance which was touring around Europe and uh, it was quite successful, so then they came with the idea to, to create Eurovisions as a continuation of, um, um, of remapping Europe. And uh, I think they were also, in certain cases, using the same archival material and sometimes even recycling the, the videos of the media makers uh, themselves. Uh, for their uh, Eurovision performance, they were somehow aesthetically and technologically supervised by the art collective The Light Surgeons. It's a London-based collective and they, I would say, work on the boundary between artistic production and commercial media production, but have long experience in creating um, expanded cinema performances, uh, immersive experiences, and video installations. And once again, thematically, I would rather relate the work of the European souvenirs to an earlier collective, the virtual migrants, um, who've been uh, talking about the experiences of uh, migrants in the UK. This is some uh, photos I took from my own experience of the uh, performance uh, in, uh, in Amsterdam in 2014, um, which the, the, the performance was followed the next day by a workshop with, with the artists who discussed rather the technical uh, elements, but it was an opportunity also to, to talk about their motivation. So basically they're juxtaposing in a very sarcastic way, we could say some um, iconic moments from Eurovision with imagery of borders, fences, uh, control apparatus, uh, that it's uh, regulating uh, our European existence. So in this sense, somehow they generate what uh, Etienne Balibar has uh, named, that Europe is a borderland, or the border itself becomes the space of existence. And here I hope I will play a bit of their trailer so you have a more multimedia perception of their work. So in summary, uh, the, how say, the, the creative approaches that I have identified and some uh, re-emerging tropes is the, the, the representation of third spaces, road streets, public-private spaces that somehow reimagine process of transculturation, the use of subversive humor as we saw in the mockumentaries or the, the use of parody also as a, a subversive mechanism. Also the representation of us damn divisions where I'll include the imagery of borders and fences as a, a critical discursive counter strategy that could generate the necessity for building cross-cultural understanding in Europe. And uh, the role of intermedial sampling and juxtaposition of existing media content as the opportunity to generate novel semantic connections across media platforms. And instead of a more uh, structured conclusion, I would just say that uh, I would like to continue uh, working on the same project with the new case study, which is the project Reimagine Europe, which will happen in the next four years, initiated by Sonic Acts Festival in Amsterdam and coordinated by Paradiso in com collaboration with 10 uh, institutions, which of course very optimistically 
aims and claims that through media participation and uh, art creativity will generate uh, a community of change makers, hopefully. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you.